Hello and welcome to a special edition of Here's the Pitch, right out of the headlines. I'm going to get it right to the point here. It's uh, Cardinals winter warm-up time, but it's also Cubs convention or whatever they call it up there. And uh, big news this weekend, Ryan Dempster does a show where he interviews players and it's tried like to be a late night show. It's supposed to be kind of fun. And Chris Bryant came on the show and uh, he said some very interesting comments, uh, as did Dempster. So uh, I'm going to play those comments, and then after the comments, we're going to bring to you Ryan Dempster. We'll let him have it, I promise. But here are those comments. I was going to a Florida Georgia Line concert, and With Nelly's Nelly. there. I was like, what is this? Sick. What's up, dude? Nice to meet you. Yeah. He's a big Cardinals fan, so, but he, let's go. Yeah. Boo. Boo. Yeah. He was, he was trying to work the magic on Bryce. Yeah. But Did he have the Band-Aid on? Who would want to play in St. Louis? So yeah. boring. <laughs> Yes, so right. boring. So I always boring. get asked, like, where do you like to play, where do you not like to play? And, ooh, St. Louis is on the place I don't like to play. Yeah. It is <laughs> Isn't that funny, though? The longer you play in the division, the more time you play those teams. Yeah. Like, oh, gosh. You know, I remember when I was getting traded, and they're like, hey, how about St. Louis? I'm like, zero chance in hell. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. No way. No, thank you. Uh-huh. No, thank you. Won't but, even go there as a free agent. Oh, yeah, not gosh. happening. It's rough. Nice. All right, so we welcome in Ryan Dempster. Ryan, what'd you do? <laughs> what, what happened? Did I did I forget to take the toast out of the toaster? They love you here now. The, the St. Louis loves Ryan Dempster and Chris Bryant now. I, I mean, they used to really love you, but now they really love you. Nice. Yeah. So we just played we just played the thing from uh, the Cubs convention, and um, clearly, I mean, I know you, so I know it was. Uh, obviously a fun line, but I mean, fans just get so worked up. I love how great this uh, this has become a thing, but just tell me a little bit about uh, kind of what you've heard today. If, you, if you've heard anything, looks, looks like you're wearing a bulletproof vest. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Just I got I to gotta wear this to work out now because I'm going to have to run faster when I do go to St. Louis. Um, no, hey, listen, um, I know that people get upset about things, but as we know, um, context is a big kind of big deal you have to kind of understand it to really kind of know where you're at um people can see comments on the internet and then they jump on that bandwagon and they go down that rabbit hole but um all i was saying when chris was talking about st louis was you know in 2012 after spending almost a decade in chicago that if i waved my new trade well, i think you're covering something up i can't tell you can you hear me all right? Now? Much better, much better. Yeah. We, we want to hear every word you say here. This is big. <laughs> this is important. No, it is. And all, and all I said was, you know, um, that I, I don't think, I, I, like I lived here in Chicago, so um, if, I, if I waived my no trade clause to go to the Cardinals, I don't think I would have been welcome back in uh, the city of Chicago. That's all I was saying. So there was no chance that I could do that. Um, you know, and I was just following up and saying, or as a free agent, I, I love going to St. Louis. I love the Cardinal fans. That's never been any kind of secret, and you know that. Um, and so I'm sorry that uh, people are bent out of shape, but um, we had a we had a blast last night, and we were just having a little bit of fun, and um, and that's all it is. Sometimes, you know, humor is a good thing. We don't have to just answer humor with negativity and go down a rabbit hole of getting mad with somebody so much. You know, let's love each other out there. You were so mean, though. Like, I, I don't want to go there. No, it was it was so funny. Oh, I, I never said that, though. <laughs> nice. See? Out of context. I very, never said that. Very much. What, uh, so, um, how, you said you haven't heard much about this today, though, outside of just the random tweets and... and yeah, tweets. and then I just get off it, because it's like, why? You know, like, I'm a, I'm a positive guy in life, and, um, you know, I just try to push for positivity, and, and, uh, and when stuff like that starts happening, I just, there's, there's no reason for it, and so... Um, but if you were there last night, hey, it was a heck of a good time. And uh, um, and if you weren't, and, and I'm sorry if the uh, the th- three seconds uh, towards the end of the two and a half hour show was what really got on your nerves. Do you find St. Louis boring? I do, but I was just wondering what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> I find waiting in line to go up in the arch boring, just because I have to be there for a while. But once I'm up in the arch, I love it. Um, it's always been. I'll never forget nineteen and going there as a rookie in nineteen ninety eight and watching Mark Kotze um, make a diving catch in center field. And when he came running in, all the Cardinal fans were giving him a standing ovation as a member of the Florida Marlins. And I just thought, wow, man! Like this is a great baseball town and a great baseball city. It's a great rivalry. It's a lot of fun. 
you know, it's, it's just the same if some guy was to sit there and play for the Cardinals for 10 years or, you know, nine years and in his ninth season, and he, he says, you know what, I want to take a trade to the Cubs. They'd be like, what? You're not welcome back here anymore. So, um, no, I've always enjoyed going there. Um, you know, I love the uh, ballpark probably as much as uh, most ballparks on the visiting, visiting side of going places. I I just think, I mean, this is what makes a rivalry fr- fun. This is, this is, I mean, everyone here is just like, oh, boy, 19 times it's going to be great. I love it. I mean, this is what you're, you're not, we, by the way, uh, we shouldn't want uh, ex-Cubs to be Cardinals, and I wouldn't think Cubs want ex-Cardinals to be Cubs, right? I mean, that's just how it's supposed to be. Like, I don't know how they feel about Jason Hayward. I would, I think I saw a lot of, uh, go back to St. Louis, Jason, for a couple of years there, though, so I think I know how they felt, but, you know, every time, we had like an ex-Cub factor where when the Cardinals were kind of good back in the day, or, or better, I should say. It'd be like, oh no, we got five ex Cubs. That's that's going to hold us down. You know, it's part of the rivalry. I think that, and you played a, a bunch of that rivalry, so you know th- this. But it did. I, it's going. What's great to me is like, there's been no baseball news this winter, so this is it. You know, Goldschmidt, uh, Bryce, Manny, and now Dempster Bryant. Oh man, are we just moving the needle? Great. That's, <laughs> if that's what gets it done, um, then that's what gets it done. But uh, yeah, and then and then I look at it like somebody's like. You know, uh, you know, uh, KB and and Dempster said something bad about St. Louis. They don't like it there. Have you seen our numbers there? They're not good. My numbers, I do, I do not like pitching there. You know, I, I threw BP to Albert there for years. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, it was a tough pitch, to, a tough place to pitch. Yeah, I, I would say what's great is, um, I mean, the Cardinal fans have eaten it up. The Cubs fans, I've seen, I'm following everything they say. They're eating it up. Um, but I mean, don't. This is true, though. I, I really, honestly think this. Chris Chris Bryant wasn't a hated guy in St. Louis. Like no one. I think pe- people possibly liked him. I think that first game in, there's gonna, it's gonna, it's, he's going to be Brandon Phillips now for the next fifteen years. Boo Birds will be. Although there'll be enough Cub fans to over, overcome that, I guess here in St. Louis. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know what? Super unfortunate, really. <laughs> Because he's like one of the nicest human beings there is. He is. He's genuinely nice. He's nice to people. He was just having fun. You're at a at a Cubs convention in a room full of two thousand Cub fans, and he's just having a little bit of fun. It was never mean spirited. It wasn't like, you know, meant to be like I hate St. Louis or anything like that. He was just having fun, and and the fans in there ate it up. Just like if you're at a Cardinal convention and some Cardinal player made a little fun poke at, at Chicago. They would eat it up too, and that's all it is. Why can't we just laugh sometimes? Why is it always so personal? You know, St. Louis is a great city. They got a great baseball town. You know, there's nice people there. It's the Midwest. It's not a problem. No, I again, I I see how much fun this is, and I, I recognize right away. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, that's why I texted <laughs> you because we're coworkers. I'm, I'm glad I could stir some <laughs> stuff up. I don't know. Ooh, what do we got? They uh, coming? Just, Oh, just a mute button hit off on me there. I was going to say, are they coming for are the Cardinal fans knocking down the, the doors? <laughs> now, now this is, I think, why it's kind of gained some steam today, by the way, um, is when Yadier Molina had some comments. I don't, did you see his comments at all? Because I'll read. Uh, I did, yeah. I actually thought it was great. You know, he's got 700,000 followers on Instagram. I'm not even in on Instagram. And there's a huge shot of Friday night with Ryan Dempster. I thought it was a great, you know, pub for the uh, talk show. It was wonderful. I'm going to read, I just want to read these because I, if someone said this about me, I, I think I would love it. Only stupid players and losers make comments like the ones made by Bryant and Dempster. And I think the only one who tweets like that is, is Donald Trump and Yadier Molina. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. What, so I guess, I've been, and I do, I follow a lot of Cubs stuff. It's just because it's a weird thing. I have a, I, you know, I'm a Cardinal fan, but I do enjoy watching what the Cubs are doing. And I, I get this sense that up there... I mean, 2016 seems like it was 1908 for these people. Like they don't remember 2016. It's what's what? Who? Daniel Descalso's our big move, and and Joe Madden's a lame duck, uh, you know, manager. He's got the one year contract. Tell me a little bit about just the feeling the Cubs fans have right now, because it seems like uh, they're not happy. Just kind of like Cardinal fans are just like, well, when it, why aren't we going after Harper and Bryant? It, it's kind of a, a fandom type thing, but Cubs fans seem a little uh, paranoid as well right now. I just. I think it's just it's just the way society is a little abundance. We want more when we already have really good things. You know, the Cubs won 95 games last year, and it's not enough because the Brewers won 96. And then you have to play a one game playoff, and um, you won 95 games with a, a hurt Chris Bryant, a, a hurt you Darvish, a hurt closer. Um, you, you lost some pieces, 
and and you still won 95 games. There's a lot of good pieces on both teams. The Cardinals got so good. Adding Paul Goldschmidt, he's one of the best right-hand hitters in baseball. One of the best all-around best players in baseball. The way he runs bases, the way he plays defense, the kind of bad he is in the lineup. Um, you know, you get a, a healthy Osuna out there. So it's always, they're going to be good. The Reds got better. The Brewers are going to be good. Um, the Pirates will be good. It's always a tough division. And so, you know, it's always exciting. It's, it's hard to not look back. It's super hard not to do. What about this year? What about this year? It's always hard to just look forward, you know, and, and sit there and just say, all right, 2019, and that's all that matters. And guess what? Everybody's tied right now. It's nobody's. Everybody's tied for first place. We don't know what's going to happen, you know. Somebody might have the most unbelievable year. Adam Wayne might, might win 20 games. You know, you don't know. Kyle Hendricks might win the ERA title. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, somebody might get hurt on opening day, and then they're out for the rest of the season. You just don't know. And so I think if you just stay in the moment as a fan, and it's really hard to do. It's hard to do as a player to just stay in the moment. But stay in the moment as a fan. Appreciate just kind of like, all right, here we go. Let's see what happens when we play this out. And that's really, that's all you can do. And you can't sit there and say, oh, we didn't get this guy. You didn't get this guy. You got a good team. You got a really good team. And so did Cardinals. Like I said, all the other teams in the division do too. Yeah, I mean, it's January, so it's just fun to have these kind of fun talks because it has been, I mean, can you... What are your thoughts on just how quiet the off seasons have been, especially the last two years? As an ex-player, it just doesn't seem good. Yeah, well, I think like this off season, I really feel like I'm not. This isn't a knock on the two players. There's two players that are holding other free agents hostage, in a sense of like they teams don't want to make a deal yet with lesser you know, free agents on the market because they're like, well, what if we get this guy? Now we don't get this guy. Okay. Then he goes somewhere else. So I think once those two guys sign and, you know, you're going to see maybe like a trickle down effect where guys start to really start to come off the board because teams are holding out hopes. Like if you're sitting there and you're in the running for Bryce Harper, that's 300 supposedly million dollars. It's a lot of money you can allocate in other, er, other areas. If you, you know, kind of have that opportunity, if you don't get them, so, um, you know, same with trades and signing a guy, and maybe you're trying to trade for trade for JT Real Muto, and then that doesn't happen. So then you go sign a different catcher. It just, I, I think there's a couple pieces that are really slowing it all down, but it is really slow. Like I read somebody's comments, uh, maybe uh, not not long ago, somebody else spoke out about. It. Maybe it was, I don't know, but it was just the fact that you work, you know, your your entire life to to get to a point where you know you, you're in the prime of your career, and you want all the teams to be in on you. You know, that's the thing. It's it, it just seems like very few teams are engaging, whether or not they are or aren't. I don't know. I'm not in those meetings. You know, it's actually not supposed to be that way. We're not supposed to know. It's a collective bargaining agreement. Mm-hmm. We're not supposed to know who's in on who. There should be no mystery team. There should be 30 mystery teams. It shouldn't be known to anybody. That's just the way it was supposed to be when it was drawn up. But in today's world with awesome social media outlets like Twitter, <laughs> where you can get out your good news... Um, it's different, and and now we kind of know the basis of the teams. But like we've always seen, Robinson Cano out of nowhere, Seattle Mariners, two hundred forty million. You know those those things happen. So um, I'm always kind of like just waiting to pick up, you know, like the phone, look at you know the the latest highlights or the latest you know news on baseball. And all of a sudden you're like, whoa, holy cow, the Pittsburgh side signed Manny Machado. Wow, never saw that coming. I think that's fun. To me, that's way more fun than if Bryce Harper goes to the Phillies and Manny Machado goes to the White Sox. Cool. We've been talking about that since, like, way before the winter meeting. So, like, if something totally else happens, I think that's kind of kind of fun and fun for the game. Yeah. It just it slows it down, though. I mean, people like yeah. hot stove. They like hearing their teams making moves, and it feels like we have to wait for these two guys to do something for everybody else to make a move. So, And I think maybe that's something they'll probably discuss. You know, maybe they put uh, not a uh, – you know, like a, a signing deadline. Like, you have to sign free agents before this period because also, too, when you're trying to put your team together and it's like, if you know on February 1st, that's it. You know, no more. There's a free agent signing freeze until this period. Well, teams are going to kind of push that. Whenever there's a timeline, it always seems to, like, stuff gets done. And when you let things just don't have a timeline, it tends to drag out for a long time. So what are you doing besides hosting uh, talk shows at Cubs conventions? Are you still are you still working for the Cubs? Kind of special work, and then MLB Network. I know right? head of janitorial services. <laughs> so and then uh, MLB Network, yeah. And then I'm just I got four kids, so I'm I'm busy. I was hopping around. I was Uber dad to going to. I'm an Uber driver. I just go to whatever thing they're going to. You know, drum lessons to basketball to this thing to that thing. And 
Um, just had a baby, so yeah, I, I'm busy, man. Being a parent, I God bless my parents. How they did it, three boys, I'll never know. Congrats on the baby. What What's your uh, your favorite moment in the rivalry of the Cubs and the Cardinals? What was your uh, playing yeah. in it, and did you have one that stuck out, or was there one just kind of just being a part of it? Yeah, I think just being a part of it. I I always um I, I loved the fact that no matter what, um, my years closing. For the Cubs, it felt like um, every time I was coming in to save a game, somehow Albert hit that in. <laughs> like, it was amazing. And it, it, Tony was very good at that, you know. And Tony was also very, very good about, um, and, it, and if you didn't catch on to this, you, you paid for it, is um, when you were warming up, he would go change three pitchers in an inning just so that the closer kept throwing pitches down in the bullpen. It was He was the master of it. He really was. He was the first one, I, I feel like, to really – utilize that as a tool in the game to be able to try and gain a competitive edge and so just the chess piece of like okay I, i'm warm so i need to back off because i know he's going to bring in the lefty here and just kind of being a part of it all is and you know the competitiveness great lineup facing each other um just an absolute you know a blast being a part of it all but you never would sign here just to get that on the record <laughs> no, just, just just after the just during the 2012 going into the 2013 season, but then after that, I was I was really good at throwing BP to not only Albert but most of the league. So I I, uh, I retired and, and got out of there before that was ever an option. But uh, no, hey, listen, story franchise. Um, they play the game the right way, and uh, it'll be fun this year to see uh, to see the rivalry with them and everybody else in the division. Everybody needs to relax. Yeah. It's fun. It's what? baseball. God, it feels good to be nice, you know. <laughs> I still think you need to apologize myself, but I, that's that's not my. <laughs> All right, well, we got nineteen fun fun matchups. I'm sure I'll see you around during some MLB Network stuff and uh, donuts with Dump. I thought that was fun. I, I didn't come back. I thought last year you kind of just had your own segment, but uh, you, you'll be on the desk and having fun, right? Just doing your thing. Yeah, last year we did daytime with Dump. It was a little bit more of a. Uh, a soap opera type uh, deal, a little bit more interview. We got a fun thing planned, hopefully for this year, and uh, doing some off the mound shows, uh, kind of the late night talk show stuff. A couple out in Arizona, and then one here benefiting the Special Olympics, uh, July twentieth, which we're really excited about. Um, and uh, and just having fun. Just I, I love talking baseball, you know. And uh, you know, it's it's great. It's been great talking with you, Brad. Yeah, I'm so glad you uh, you, you let me uh, do this today. And uh, I'll just. <laughs> I do. I am. I think because people wanted. I think people are. This people get crazy, but there's nothing to talk about. So this is why it's totally. It, hey, um, if we sparked a little fun in the rivalry, and so be it. You know. Someone like, once said, can't, "Can't we all just get along?" <laughs> I think it was Richard Pryor. Oh, uh, I think it was someone else. Uh, later oh, it was mid nineties, yeah. um, but I don't want to talk about who it was. I, I'll text you who it was. Okay, people please. might people might remember. All right, man. Well, you got. Well, if four... you're wrong, then people are going to be really mad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I do know who it was. Now I can't remember his name. Rodney King is his name. Uh, back in the nineties. Uh, yeah. Bad, bad bad. Don't need to talk about that. But yes, <laughs> let's have some fun this year. Good luck to your Cubs. It'll be fun. Uh, Nineteen games, and let's let's just knock the Brewers out. And let's have a wild card game and have some fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah, enjoy, man. Have fun.